Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Chancellor to back Britain staying in a reformed EU The farce of the EU travelling circus and European Union bosses draft shale gas rules David Cameron is lying to British voters about the EU and immigration, Vivian Redding claims. Plus, European Union opposes nuclear subsidies, but not wind. I'm Rick Tinnis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, George Osborne is to say that Britain should remain in a reformed European Union and that the UK has allies in its push for liberalisation of regulations that could hinder growth. In a major speech on Europe next week, the Chancellor will say that as the economic recovery puts Britain at the top of the growth league in the European Union, the reform agenda is gaining momentum. He will also make it clear that Britain is gaining support as it pushes for changes in the way the EU operates. Well, as we shall see a little later in this programme, old Georgie Porgy doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. What he is saying is complete nonsense. But besides the rhetoric, since the turn of the millennium and in the introduction of the internet, the marketplace has gone global. It makes no economic sense to be tied to a single trading block with rules and legislation that we in Britain do not control. Sorry folks, but we need to get with the real world. We need to be trading globally, setting our own independent policies and rules and building jobs and prosperity under the absolute supervision and democratic governance and only by those we elect into office to do it. It is perhaps the most outlandish of the European Union's excesses, a £130 million travelling circus that once a month sees the European Parliament decamp from Belgium to France. Over the course of the weekend, some 2,500 plastic trunks will be loaded onto five lorries and driven almost 300 miles from Brussels to Strasbourg. On Monday, about 1,000 politicians, officials and translators will then make the same journey on two specially chartered trains hired at taxpayers' expense. A few thousand more will go to Strasbourg by other means, as the European Parliament switches from Brussels, its permanent base, to its official home in northern France. Now, for the first time, the full detail of this madness contained in official European documents can be disclosed, and the price to the taxpayers is astonishing. This story on our website drills into the truth behind this complete and utter absurd madness. And frankly, the whole political system in Europe has long been derailed. The lunatic kleptocrats have taken over the asylum. But make no mistake, whilst we as individuals stand by and allow this to happen, it is ultimately our own fault. It beggars belief how many people I speak to who say I vote XYZ party because that's what I've always done. We are fools to ourselves if we partake in tribal ritualistic voting. At least have the good sense to read each party's manifesto. Frankly, if we don't pay attention and vote this nonsense out, then we're all going to pay a very high price indeed. Shale gas should only be developed in the European Union if a set of conditions is met, such as making public the chemicals used to extract it and taking stringent measures to prevent water contamination, according to a report. The measures proposed in a draft obtained by Reuters are not binding, following heavy lobbying against formal law for shale gas, including a letter to the Commission, the EU executive, from Britain's very own Prime Minister, David Cameron. OK, folks, I don't know where next to go with all this, but I know that we need your help. All parties in the UK are driving headlong for the gas fracking revolution. And why? Well, because the UK is bankrupt. They believe that the only way Britain will ever be able to unravel the economic mess it is in is via these shale gas resources. Now, in one sense, they're right. You can only run a successful economy when you have a balance of primary, secondary and tertiary industries. The balance in the UK is far too heavily weighted towards services, and that's the problem. 
However, fracking is seriously damaging to the environment, and it's not just me saying this like some green tree-hugging wallaby. That has been the experience in the USA where fracking has taken place regularly. Not just in the chemicals used, but also because the hydrocarbons that are extracted and drawn from the safe locker shale beds are in themselves toxic to the environment, causing cancers, autoimmune disease, and of course cumulative accumulation in the food chain. It's vastly expensive and ineffective. We still have the remnants of a massive UK coal industry, huge hydropower potential. We are the leaders and to date the only country on the planet to have achieved over unity energy production from fusion via the jet project in Cambridge. Our politicians are guilty of being ignorant, lazy and misguided. The folks misguiding them are the globalist petrochemical giants whose lobbying funds, also known as bribes, are enormous and in every single case around the globe they have got rich whilst the people got shafted. Now, three things I need you to do. One, get a copy of Vulture's Picnic by world-renowned investigative journalist Greg Pallast and read it. Two, look up Gaslands and H2 Oil on YouTube. Find out how these petrochemicals from gas and oil damage the environment and your drinking water. And please, share this with everyone you can, and ask them to do the same, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay informed. David Cameron is stoking up populist myths about the European Union and migrants from Eastern Europe to pull the wool over the eyes of voters, a senior Brussels official has said. Vivian Redding, the vice president of the European Commission, effectively accused the prime minister and his government of telling lies to the public to distract people from the real problems Britain faces. Mrs Redding, who earlier this week called for the EU to become a United States of Europe, accused ministers of whipping up scares over benefit tourism by European migrants in order to make people speak about the real subjects in the UK. Now, we all agree with Mrs Redding. Big Cheese King DC, the canine conservative globalist predator cloaked in Nick Clegg's liberal bonnet, is absolutely barefaced lying to the UK people, and almost without exception of any of his statements. Now, it sounds hard to believe in this instance he's actually playing down the critical issues and hiding the terrible truth behind another veil of lies about benefits. In essence, King David is playing that he has the power to control benefits available to migrants, thus ensuring that the British people stay focused on the immigration issue. All the while, he is aiding the transfer of power, control and wealth away from the people of the UK to a foreign power. In a nutshell, David Cameron is committing treason with the slight of one hand and using provocative lies to distract the people whilst he does it with the other. The bottom line is that Britain is being sold into the slavery of a federal EU superstate and at a pace. Now I know this sounds like radical stuff, but check out our website. No politics, no alliances, just thousands upon thousands of articles full of facts about what is taking place in every single aspect of our society. British consumers could pay £17 billion in potentially unnecessary subsidies to fund construction of the country's first new nuclear power plant in a generation, the European Commission has said. The EC said it was assessing whether the planned subsidies for Hinkley Point in Somerset, which could exceed the £16 billion cost of the plant itself, were needed at all, and whether energy companies would build the plant anyway without a penny of public support. Ministers in October signed a landmark deal with energy giant EDF to fund the construction of the plant, which would see consumers pay billions of pounds in subsidies to the French company for decades to come. Now, on Wednesday, the Commission opened a formal investigation into whether the construction of a nuclear power station could not be achieved by market forces alone without state intervention. The Commission said its investigation, which threatens to delay or derail the plant altogether, will assess whether UK plans to subsidise the construction and operation of the plant are in line with EU state aid rules. Now this article really highlights a massive point about Mrs Thatcher's asset sales and indeed those of subsequent governments. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about the founder of the nuclear power industry in the UK. 
British Nuclear Fuels Limited was a nuclear energy and fuels company owned by the UK government. It was a former manufacturer and transporter of nuclear fuel, ran reactors, generators and sold electricity, reprocessed and managed spent fuel and decommissioned nuclear plants and other similar facilities. Until 2003, its headquarters were based at Risley near Warrington, England, and BNFL's headquarters were then moved to Daresbury Park Industrial Estate, also near Warrington. Now, on the 1st of April 2005, BNFL formed a new holding company and started a rigorous restructuring process which would transfer or sell most of its entire domain divisions. In 2005, it transferred all of its nuclear sites to the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority and it then sold its Westinghouse Electric Company subsidiary in February 2006. Later, BNFL sold the separate companies that made up its major subsidiary, British Nuclear Fuels Group. By May 2009, BNFL had completed the sales of all its assets and had no remaining operational activities or businesses. Okay, so the people in Britain, through the government, instituted this industry worth billions of pounds and then the government sold it. Okay, so where's the money? Now we have no nuclear industry and we're going to have to pay the French and the Chinese, because as we reported before, they're a partner in this deal, vast sums each year with no asset to show for it and nothing at the end of it. Well, except a nuclear power plant that needs decommissioning. So why are we doing it this way? Why can it not be that the people of Britain, through the government, build and improve their own power production and generation facilities, building an asset onto the UK balance sheet and a guaranteed income for the future. Well, it's Monday. Another week of 2014 passes us by, so let's take a look at what the papers have to say. EU to step up promotion of British job vacancies in high unemployment European countries and will force the UK to highlight rights of citizens from other member states to work without discrimination. The French politician and MEP is strongly supportive of David Cameron's call for European reform. Rachida Dati was in London this week to deliver a speech at an Open Europe conference in which she railed about how she felt she was shouting in the desert in Brussels. A foreign Office analysis suggests that Scotland would face an extra bill of between £1.6 and £3.5 billion if it becomes independent. Green MEP calls for an EU moratorium on shale gas and says he's prepared to resume battle against the French company. Only working migrants can claim housing benefit, while workers who lose jobs can't claim job seekers allowance for six months. And the European Greens threaten legal fight under state aid rules as the UK holds out against new renewable energy target for the EU. The ghost of Rwanda hangs over the Central African Republic, and again the UN warns of the danger of genocide. However, it is significant that EU ambassadors unanimously proposed last week in Brussels that urgent consideration be given to the proposal made by Cathy Ashton that there should be a rapid deployment of a battalion-sized force to back up the African and French peacekeepers in their efforts to restore security in the Central African Republic. Just as an aside, I happen to notice comment and social media sharing activity on the above story, which strikes me as a really important piece of news. Now, this has 16 tweets, 9 Facebook shares and 1 Google plus 1. Well, apparently nothing like as important as the Seattle Seahawks booking a place at the Super Bowl, which has 94 tweets and 31 Facebook shares as I write this. If people don't start waking up and smelling the coffee, they're not going to be able to even drink it soon because they'll be head to foot in the sugar. Business Secretary Vince Cable says foreign manufacturing giants have approached the government with concerns about the UK quitting the EU. And UKIP leader Nigel Farage claims he's received a deluge of support after giving Antonis Samaras a right dressing down in the European Parliament. Six influential voices from business and politics assess the Eurosceptic mood and say whether the UK should quit. 
And Ed Davey, the Energy Secretary, has called on EU heads of state to endorse a target to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 40% by 2030, but rejected any specific binding of renewable targets. Now remember, it's Twitter Tuesday tomorrow, so let us have your thoughts and comments using the hashtag hash the unit. Feedback on what you feel we are doing right or wrong would be really useful. And of course, if you have suggestions for things you think that we should be doing, then post them out to Twitter too, and we'll take a look. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>